Just like our manual low loss fitting valves gave us more control over the automatic low loss fittings, our four port manifold gauge set is going to give us more control over a three port manifold gauge set. But we still have the same rules apply. We're going to take the refrigerant out of the tank without fractionation, get it through the hoses without contamination, and put it into the system without damaging our compressor. So we got our four hoses, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to put our suction hose on first. And with this example, we're going to use the ball valve style low loss fittings because I don't know anybody that's going to use a four port manifold with automatic low loss fittings. But the same rules apply, two fingers, you never want to cup your hand, prevent that frostbite, never use cotton gloves. If you use gloves, use the butyline gloves. But we're going to simply thread this fitting onto our unit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen my hose at the manifold gauge set. What I'm gonna do is then open this little valve right here. This allows refrigerant to flow through the blue hose and leak or purge out of this connection. Then I can quickly tighten this connection up. So now we've purged it up to this connection right here. And next we can go two ways. We can hook our tank up and purge it that way or we can go ahead and hook up our red hose and purge it that way. I'm gonna do the red hose first. So in this example here, I'm just going to loosely connect the red hose two fingers, now it's loosely connected. It's not connected, there's no refrigerant coming out of the unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this red valve, my ball valve here, and what I'm then gonna do is open the blue side of my manifold gauge set. That's going to allow the refrigerant to flow into my manifold. Then I'm gonna open the red knob on my manifold gauge set. This is going to allow refrigerant to flow through my manifold gauge set, purging out my manifold gauge set. That refrigerant flows through this red hose and the refrigerant is going to start leaking out of this connection right here. Once it starts leaking out, I'll just shut this ball valve off and go ahead and tighten this the rest of the way up. Now we know that we've purged the blue hose, we've purged the manifold gauge set, we've also purged the red hose. And I've used my low pressure vapor to purge the hose. That way I'm not losing liquid refrigerant trying to purge. Now I can go ahead and close both of these valves back off and I can open this valve up. Now this allows refrigerant to flow through the hose up past my manifold gauge set into my high side pressure reading. My low side pressure reading is coming through the manifold gauge set and it's reading the low side pressure. Now how these valves are designed is even when these valves are open or closed, it's regardless, it's still putting that pressure straight to the manifold gauge set. So it doesn't go into the manifold centerpiece itself, just like the three hose manifold. But we also wanna hook up our refrigerant tank. Just like before, we're gonna zero it out, we're gonna put the refrigerant tank on the scale, write down how much it weighs, compare that with my ending of my last call to make sure I haven't lost any refrigerant. Then I'm gonna take my yellow hose, and my yellow hose, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this little ball valve right here, and I wanted to loosely connect it to my tank. Just leave it nice and loose right here. Then I now have something a little different. I'm gonna open up my blue side of my manifold gauge set, my low pressure side. This allows that low pressure vapor back into the center like we already had before. But now I have another option. I'm going to open the REF or the refrigerant or the service hose valve. This is gonna connect the yellow hose to that main valve. By opening this valve here, the low pressure vapor is flowing out of the unit through the blue hose, pushing across the manifold gauge set pushing into the section where this valve is located, pushing into this yellow hose, and it pushes all the contaminants or moisture out of this hose, and it starts to leak out or purge out of this point right here. Then I quickly tighten this all the way up, and now my hose is completely purged, my manifold gauge set's completely purged, and I'm ready to go. Now we have a few options at this point. You can close off just the refrigerant valve, you can close off just the blue side valve, or you can close them both off. In this case, for simplicity, we're just going to close them both off until we're ready for it. Now what I'm gonna do is take my tank, and I'm gonna open the valve of my tank. I'm gonna leave this one open, but I'm gonna open the valve of my refrigerant tank. And we're gonna turn the tank upside down. And if you notice, my liquid refrigerant is gonna be at the bottom, just like before, so I have liquid coming out of that valve. I've already purged all the contaminants out. Now I'm gonna take my scale and I'm gonna zero the scale out. This way, anything that comes out of that tank, I'll be able to record it. Notice I zeroed the scale every single time of these scenarios while the hose was hooked up. If I tried to zero it before the hose was hooked up, the weight of the hose or the tension of that hose could affect the weight that that's showing. So now we're ready to add refrigerant. And this example again is for a running operating system. So the system is running and I gotta get refrigerant out of the tank into the system. And we know we can't put it into the high side, 
because the compressor in the unit is pushing up a high pressure, higher pressure than what's in the tank. So we cannot get the refrigerant into the high side. Luckily, there's a check valve, so if we accidentally open the high side, it can't go back into this tank. So we're good there. But we have to throttle it into the suction side. So I'm gonna take liquid refrigerant, because it's a 400 series, it's a blend, it ends with a capital from the tank as a liquid form to keep the mixtures right. And I gotta get it into the suction side with little bitty throttles. But now I have multiple different options. I got many different ways I can do this. One of those options is I can open up this refrigerant valve all the way open. And with that, I can then continuously throttle in just like we did before by opening and closing the blue side. Just let a short little shot of refrigerant in. That refrigerant will expand by the time it gets through the blue hose. It will expand into the suction pipe and expand before it gets to the compressor. And we're all good. We can charge it just like we did before the exact same way. Another option is I can close this valve off and I can open up my suction port and leave my suction port entirely open. Then if I wanted, I could throttle refrigerant in with this yellow hose or the service valve. With this, I can still do the exact same thing, throttle refrigerant in, short little burst of refrigerant and allows that refrigerant more time to expand inside this manifold gauge set, inside the blue hose, expand again when it gets in this larger pipe and fully turn into a vapor before it gets to the compressor. So I can throttle it in through this hose or I could throttle it in through this hose. I have the option. But just think about the flow of refrigerant. Some of the four port manifold gauge sets have a little sight glass in the middle. And if you have a sight glass, I like to leave the suction port open and throttle it into the refrigerant port. That way I can watch the refrigerant boil from a liquid to vapor as it goes into the system. They make multiple different examples of four port manifold gauge sets, multiple different brands. I used to really love the four port manifolds before the probes came out, but still they have multiple different options. And yet I have a third option. I have this little valve on my hose, this little ball valve connected right to the tank. That low loss fitting, I can close that one off. I can then open up this valve, the service valve on my manifold gauge set. I can leave open the suction valve of my manifold gauge set. Now notice that this valve is open and this valve is open. So in other words, this yellow hose is connected to that blue hose, but nothing can happen because it's all the same pressure. But now if I want to charge refrigerant, I can simply open and close this little yellow hose right here. With this little ball valve, opening it gives it a little bit of shot of refrigerant. That allows the refrigerant to change state from a liquid to a vapor as it expands inside that yellow hose. It can then expand as it goes across the manifold gauge set. It can expand even more as it goes through this low pressure suction hose. And then it expands even more when it gets into this larger suction pipe. So it gives me a lot more control. Me personally, I like to throttle my refrigerant in right here at this point. The reason I like that is because it gives it more time for that refrigerant to expand into a vapor before it gets into the compressor. And I don't have to worry about bleeding out this yellow hose or ending up with extra refrigerant inside this yellow hose. Now, every time I shut this off, I only have low pressure vapor in that yellow hose. But there's not necessarily a wrong way. As long as we're getting the refrigerant out of the tank in a liquid form, we're getting it across our pre-purged hoses so we don't get contamination in it, and we allow it to turn into a vapor before it hits that compressor, then you're going to be good. Notice I just gave it three different examples and they're all correct. When I'm done charging the system, I'll make sure that I leave the valve off on my hose before the tank. Then I want to make sure I leave the yellow hose valve open and I leave also open my low side to my manifold gauge set. So that leaves the yellow hose and the blue hose connected. No refrigerant is going to be flowing because I have it off at this point right here. I'm done charging the system. I can take and close off this red valve. I close this valve completely off. I leave it connected. I just close the valve off. But in this red hose is high pressure liquid refrigerant. There's a significant volume of liquid. If I tried to release that refrigerant, that'd be an EPA violation plus a hazard that that liquid refrigerant could hurt us. So now we have even more options. I could leave this yellow hose open, but really I've already bled all the refrigerant out of that yellow hose. So I'm going to go ahead and close this yellow hose off. I don't have to, but it just saves me a little bit of time. I already know I've bled all the refrigerant out of that yellow hose. Now it's separated from a manifold gauge set. Now if I want to bleed this high pressure liquid refrigerant across the manifold, I simply bleed it through the high side. Remember the suction side's already open. So now I've simply connected the red hose over here to the blue hose, the high pressure to the low pressure. The refrigerant's going to move across from the higher pressure of the manifold gauge set to the low pressure side and it's going to flow back into the system. 
by having the four port manifold gauge set, I'm able to close off that yellow hose. So I don't have to worry about that high pressure refrigerant dripping back into this yellow hose and then having to re-evaporate back into the system. This way I have more control, it runs straight across. Now that I got that refrigerant back into the system, I can go ahead and quickly with two fingers, making sure I don't get burned, take off this high pressure hose. Then I can also close off the valve for my suction at the unit, take this off, and I can turn my tank right side up and I can close the valve right here on my tank and I can take the hose loose from my refrigerant tank. Now I have multiple different ways I could purge these hoses. Because of these vol valves, I could purge each individual hose by itself. Little purge, de minimis, should be vapor only, little purge, de minimis, and the last one should also be vapor only, little purge, de minimis. Open and close it, let the refrigerant out, and then close it back when I'm done so no contaminants get up inside of these hoses. Or I could open my yellow service valve, open up my blue valve, open up my red valve, and just turn one of these knobs and then all three of them at the same time, the minimum amount. Either way you do it, there's no wrong way. You're getting only vapor out of the hoses. Again, don't purge that liquid refrigerant out, but only the vapor out of these hoses. Whichever way you use, make sure all three of these are off when you're done. Make sure all of these valves are closed off when you're done. So the next service call, you don't have to remember that. Now you're ready to put the valve caps back onto the unit, put your valve caps back on your tank, take your tank off, re-zero it, put your tank back on, write down your ending weight, the job, so you have your running log book, and you're ready to go to that next service call. So if you see it's a little bit more complex, but really it's not, it just gives you more options. It gives you more methods from doing it. And every service tech has their own methods that they prefer. Learn from somebody, but you're eventually gonna be developing your own methods. You're gonna have your own groove. And it simply comes down to make sure you take it out as a liquid so there's no fractionation. Make sure you purge the air and moisture out of your hoses so there's no contamination. And make sure you throttle it into the unit so there's no liquid refrigerant getting to your compressor. Many different brands of four port manifold gauge sets, sight glasses, non-sight glasses, hoses, etc. But they all still work the same way. This fourth port is for a vacuum hose. So we have a vacuum hose, a larger hose, and its own separate valve. In this demonstration, we've left that valve closed the whole entire time, and I don't even have that hose hooked up. We're gonna talk about that hose in a later video when we actually get to vacuums. But that's the four port manifold. That's how we'd charge with the four port manifold and manual low loss fittings.